I know why I begin. That is where and how I begin. So I have begun. Did I begin before the first word was thought and then written? This beginning has been coming forever. When did it begin? That is unknowable. Why am I in this room saying these things? To know why is important, so I can get on with how and forget why. Why this and not that? I am now less interested in why I begin or have begun than how I am beginning. I introduce. The beginning is introducing itself because I do not accept that it magically appears instantly from nothing. It emerges from a cesspool of something. In being intimate with myself, I am more likely to discover it has begun as I consider its source, I realize it was always coming, but now there is a crescendo of emergence that makes it apparent to this dumb listener. If why to begin is solved for me by my past self or some external force, then where, when, how become prominent. Where? It began where consciousness was able to locate the force of a particular momentum. When? It has always been coming. The declaration of its particularity is the incipient moment. How? I'm not sure I have begun if I am asking why. I am sure I have begun if I am asking where, when and how. When I begin can override where I begin and how I begin can override both where and when I begin. The experience of the actual emergence of this subject matter is a signifier of performance underway. It has occurred to me since that this space between living life as life and living life as performance is a central feature of my research, occupying the space between comings and goings, beginnings and endings, definition and non definition, invited and uninvited, official and unofficial, private and public, and see that. As an episodic interlude and as related background information, I include this quote from Masumi in which I see parallels for gate performance practice with his philosophy. Technically speaking, for activist philosophy, the end of the experience knows its beginning. All that a self-creating occasion of experience ultimately knows of the world's activity is how it has taken up a portion of it into its own becoming. What this will have been exactly retains a certain indeterminacy as long as the becoming is still in process. In 
Something that is started with music now seems energised in a direction of inclusiveness, inclusiveness of various art making media. The experiences of presenting text within academic symposiums as a performance, incorporating my own as well as others, voice and movement into the often static music context. Music events in unusual locations slash context. Participating in long duration theatrical events, etc. All seem to be telling me about a refreshed way of approaching my, my performance, performance practice. practice and of promoting an interpenetration of art and life. Life and art. There is also something about the performance perimeter or performative frame, frame that, that is drawing my attention. My interest here reveals a desire to protect, make safe, to nurture, to nurture and encourage those within this frame, to give them a sense of permissiveness, that it is okay to let go, to let go. To explore and play. To explore and play in any way. With the elements at hand. I would like to transmit encouragement, encouragement without the performer having any sense of interference. The performance is always becoming. becoming. Always susceptible to changes, changes in, momentum. in momentum. Always an emergent configuration. configuration. Within the non-performer, non-performance space, space and duration is the work, workers, Focus. virtual appearance, an ultimate arising. <laughs> to questions about format, context, and purpose. As her meal during the quiet she summarily departed, not long after being replaced by a young vegetarian. His gastronomic preference was for celery, at least that's what it sounded like. Such a crisp and crackling crunch, consequently consumed, with a of the style muted munching. <coughs> Under these conditions, any pretense to entertainment was stripped away to reveal an essential nature of participants being of, of one's relationship to a life part reality. The incidental, the virtual sphere of potentialities coexistent with the scripted event have bestowed an unexpectedly fresh and rich experience. Does acknowledgement of this incidental material simply notify of our inability to focus the mind and to a lost opportunity of reinforcement? It is clear amongst the group that set up is a key part of the shift from a non-performative consciousness to a performative one. Making the transition between the two conditions a spatial field rather than crossing a sharp line. By 5 p.m. By 5 p.m. Some performers had moved well and truly into performance. While others while others were still transitioning or yet to physically arrive. 
I understand. There is potential for this format to confuse, to confuse the audience. But, but equally, equally, it may intrigue them. It may intrigue them. them. It has occurred to me since that this space between living life as life and living life as performance is a central feature of my research, occupying the space between comings and goings, beginnings and endings, definition and non-definition, invited and uninvited, official and unofficial, private and public, this and that. I was concerned with not looking for anything in particular from my activity of crossing at the lights, but to listen, to wait for the experience to offer up the subject matter of the conversation and engagement. The experience of the actual emergence of this subject matter was a signifier of performance underway. Thank you. 